Okay, let's talk a little bit about tools that we use for installing network cabling and, and connections. And let's go over the various types of uh, cable connectors and how to properly make a Cat5 or how to properly terminate a Cat5 cable. So let's first, let's start off talking about uh, tools a little bit. Uh, some various tools that you'll want. You want to use uh, a pair of uh, cable scissors something similar to this and what these are used for is to trim the copper cables inside of a cat5 cable to a uniform uh, size which I will demonstrate in a little bit cable cutters are good a pair of cable cutters here that provide a nice uniform cut when I cut through my cat5 cable or coaxial cable crimpers crimpers are a must these are RJ45 and RJ11 crimpers so you can see the RJ11 uh, crimper is right there. The RJ45 crimper is right there. Um, these are just a different brand. I don't necessarily see an advantage or disadvantage over either of these. Um, I've had this pair a number of years. Recently upgraded or replaced them um, just because I'm starting to have some trouble with these. Uh, coaxial crimper or crimpers. These are for compression type fittings. Something like this would go in there. And I'll, I'll demonstrate how to make one of these too. Uh, but these are both, I think they're both identical. Um, the reason I have two pairs is because my son frequently helps me on jobs. Uh, cable strippers. I have several different kinds here. Um, all these work pretty good. These are the ones I currently use the most right now. Uh, what this one does uh, coaxial cable this one works on uh, cat5 but these are good too this as junky as this looks actually works pretty good and uh, again the only reason I end up with extra is because I have people to help me screwdriver handy to have this one's multi-bit of course nothing special about that punch down tool now the way this punch down tool works is, I'll demonstrate it in a little bit. This actually has a, a 110 bit on it. Another bit you'll frequently use the 66 bit, which is similar. It just does not cut. Uh, at least it does not cut on one end. Uh, but the way this works, this actually provides like a uniform pressure when you punch down into a, a punch down, similar to what is on the back of this. If I get the camera to focus on it. And when you push down on it, you can see it eventually gives way. I'll demonstrate that too. Cable tester, or uh, you know what? Actually, let's cover this real quick. This is a punch down block. It's filthy because it's got drywall dust in it. Uh, but the way this works is you can stick your um, your block in here. This one actually may not fit in here very good. Some of these were a different brand that I didn't care for. Anyways, the way that works is I would then have a place to, to base that off of. Um, cable testers, two different kinds. It's my newer one. I like this one. It's got a nice digital readout. Tells you what's going on. Nothing wrong with this one either. I've had this one since the late '90s, and it still works. Okay, it just uses LEDs. That'll that'll tell us the uh, continuity of a cable. Toners. Remember we talked about that out of the way we talked about toners that's how they work um, this one actually has the ability to change tones well I promise it does what am I doing wrong okay I'm not sure what's going on there. Anyway, um, the way this would work is I could stick this this end into a, a wall plate, and then on the other end, I could search through my uh, punch panel until I found that tone again, because it'll it'll carry all that way. Oh, there we go. I just pushed the button too long. So you could actually have several of these out there, and you could put each of them on a different tone. 
That way you could tell them apart. Okay. So you get the idea there. You can use these to find uh, coaxial cables, electrical cables, uh, any sort of thing. Um, but maybe I can demonstrate it on a coaxial cable in a minute. Okay, so that covers tools. Um, oh, another tool, real quick, drywall saw. Very handy to have, uh, especially when you're wanting to mount wall plates into uh, existing construction. So now let's move on to, let's talk about network cables for a minute and network cards. I'm having the breakfast of champions this morning. I have a real bad Red Bull habit. All right. If you remember from my previous lecture, I talked about when I started in the 90s, everything was based off of coaxial cable. So this is what I was talking about. Your network card, this actually was <laughs> right at the era when we were starting to switch over to Cat5. Uh, so this, this network card, card actually works with either or. But you would have your coaxial cable, and it was BNC connectors, which is this type of connector here. And you would put these little T-junctions on your network cable, or your network card, and then the coaxial cable would run off to other computers. Now, at the end, you would have to terminate it with a terminator like that. Um, and this would just be the part of the coaxial cable where it, it stopped and didn't continue on to other computers. You could just latch it onto here and do one of those and then run that off to a, 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 the, the, the rest of the line. Uh, but what this did, this, this just has like a resistor on it and it just absorbs the signal so it doesn't bounce back down the cable. Okay. So that's the old coaxial B and C days. Of course, today we almost always see a RJ45 connector. This happens to be a PCI bus network card. Um, when you're looking at these, you can typically find the MAC address. I'm just going to make a liar out of me, unless I'm overlooking it. It's usually printed on the card. Um, oh, right there. So. That's the MAC address of the network card. All right. Um, so yeah, if you if you want to know it just by looking at it, you could look there. Of course, there's ways of changing the MAC address inside of Windows. At least make it appear it's coming from a different MAC address. Um, all right. So let's move on to cable types. And I'm going to purposely talk about Cat5 last. I'm going to start off with fiber optic cable. Uh, so here I have um, a multi-mode cable with SC connectors, and this is just a, a little patch cable that we would use to go from, say, a termination box to a, a switch or uh, maybe even a computer if you have a computer with a fiber optic card in it. Um, but anyway, uh, that's that's what a fiber optic cable looks like. You know, it it actually does bend, even though you know the internal is you know essentially glass-like, uh, but that's fiber optic. Uh, coaxial cable you're probably all familiar with. Where did my cable strippers go? Doo, 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 doo. Oh, actually, if you slide this up, it actually makes the perfect little cut. That's what I was looking for a minute ago. I just screwed that up. I went too deep. All right. You actually kind of want to stop when you. Now I'm fighting it. That should be good. Well, I can't even strip a Cat5 cable this morning. What's up with me? Anyway, if you get this off there, I actually want to leave a little bit of that foil. You'll see it's got a, um, a coaxial center. And then it has um, like a foil outside bracket. And that's just to shield. Well, the camera's focusing on that, okay. That's just to shield that copper core. Let me get my mess out of the way. Anyway, coaxial cable. Moving along, 
two cat fives. A cat five, remember, has four pair inside of it. So you can see there's the four pairs of wires. Open the camera, focus in. So I'm a brown pair, green pair, blue pair, orange pair. All right. So if I'm going to make a Cat5 cable, I'm going to strip off a little more of that. What I, first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of this nylon thread here. And what that nylon thread is for, that's just to kind of help when you're pulling the cable. Um, you can pull on it and it won't stretch quite as bad. So if you remember right, the color code is green, white, green orange white actually scissors have these two little notches on them sometimes I use them sometimes I don't uh, but if you line the, the pair of cable up in there and you do that one time it actually straightens them out for you I'm really bad about just using my fingers um, but you know either thing either way works the idea is get them straightened out and get the twists out of them okay so green white green Orange, white, blue, blue, white, orange, and brown, white, brown. And then this just takes practice. And trust me, if you do any kind of installation, you'll get really good at this over time. Um, but you can do that. And remember, take the scissors. I usually just kind of put my thumb, thumb on there and kind of pinch it and cut them off nice and flush. So I get them nice and straight like that. I then take the cable, pin one's over here, slide that cable up and or wires up inside that connector. Take my crimpers, stick the connector in, squeeze. And I actually have a really bad problem with my right hand right now from using the mouse too much, so I can't squeeze like I used to be able to. Uh, and the idea is that these little copper traces which you cannot make out on that camera I promise you anyway there's eight little like little pieces of copper that have little teeth on them and they sink into that sink into that cable I wish this camera would really focus in on that um, but they, they actually bite in past the jacket and get a hold of the copper now if you want you could use something like this to put on there a little stress boot I actually hate these things in the real world because they make the cable nearly impossible to take off on and off I just realized I didn't finish covering all the different cables, which I'll finish here in a minute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and terminate this end. You know what? Why don't we punch this end down? So... When I'm going to punch it down, I'm going to do basically the same thing. I'm going to spread these cables all out. Let's stay make sure I'm in the field of view of the camera. Do, do, do. All right, and this actually has the A and B standards on there. So if we're going to use A, what I usually do is I kind of get them laid out in the order they need to be in. Brown, white, brown. And then I like to keep the cable in there kind of nice and tight. Some people go at it like that, that works, or you can come in from the side. It's really up to you. You know, the idea is not to leave too much of that cable exposed um, because the more of it that's exposed, the more crosstalk we could possibly get. But what I typically do is I'll just start off just kind of laying those cables in there. So, oops, I got that one a little too far. If you have like a little metal pick or plastic pick, it's really helpful when you're doing this. I actually have one in my tool bag, but it's over off to the side. I'm not going to worry about it right now. We can get by without it. And green, blue, white. Okay, 
And once I can just have them laid in there like that, I'm going to use my nifty little punch down block. I'll lay my connector in there. And I'm going to grab my punch down tool wherever I laid it at. Here it is. Now, the punch down tool has a cut end. Okay? That cut end needs to be on the outside where the, the trim cable's at that we're going to get rid of. It actually says cut right there, but again, stupid camera probably can't focus in on that. Anyway, I'm just going to go through here, punch these down. And you notice as I punch those down, it pops those wires off in a perfect world. Now, once we're done, I put that boot on there like an idiot, but I was just trying to show you that boot was there. I was going to put an end on it. Um, anyway, now we can test this with our cable tester. So let's grab our nifty little piece of coax or Cat5 cable. Grab our tester. Put this in. There's this little remote piece that comes off. Put that in there. Turn it on. Let's see what we got. Ooh, it says I'm open. Man, I must have really screwed up. Did I not get it punched down all the way? And this happens in the real world. So here you go. Here's a troubleshooting lesson. <laughs> it's probably my weak arm. I'm telling you I can't squeeze anymore. I'm getting old. I'll squeeze my good, good hand. Man, it feels like it's down. So you can tell this isn't scripted because this didn't work like I wanted it to. Huh. I'm actually not sure what's going on there. I can't I can't believe that just pins one and two are open. Or closed. I'm gonna do this real quick. Wow. I suspect there is something going on with this uh, punch over here, and this 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 jack was laying loose in my bag, and it's probably a bad one. And in fact, I'm going to pitch it. But in a perfect world, you would run across, and those of course would line up. Or on here, you'd have one to one, two to two, three to three, four to four. You get the idea. But here, I'll show you what it looks like. So there you go. Actually, you know what it is? It's that stupid jumper. <laughs> it's this thing. Here you go. Network troubleshooting 101 right here. Okay. We know that's good. Let's plug this into here. Look, oh, man, it's still missing one. Oh, well, it's a lot better than what it was. We're missing pin three for some reason, which pin three would be uh, orange. Uh, yeah, orange. So we could push down on that again. And we're still missing it. Anyway, you get the idea. I promise you my cable installations usually go a lot smoother than that. All right, push that off to the side. Um, back on the topic of fiber optic, something that we use here uh, with power is we use um, optical ground wire, and the guys were really cool and grabbed me some of this. Um, this stuff's really expensive. What it is, this is the the um, the ground that's up on the uh, high line on the transmission line, and down the center of it actually has this core, and inside of it is fiber. Okay, so throw those off to the side I've got one that's trimmed away so each one of these has fibers in it and I don't know if you can see these little thin fibers right here that gives us a uh, single mode fiber so we can actually talk to our uh, transmission stations over the um, ground wire through fiber that was a little better you can kind of see those fibers laying out they're really really thin okay anyways Pretty cool stuff, I think. I'm geeky, though. 
Um, what have we not done? Coaxial cable. I'm taking this little guard off because it's not working for me. There's two blades in here, and the idea is that one's going to go all the way through. And if you listen, you can actually hear them. And then the next one starts to dig in. So that when you pull this off, that's what I tried to do earlier, you get this nice shielding and a piece of copper. So you stick your compression fitting on here. And you push it on. And this can be a bear sometimes. Until it gets flush. And then you take your crimpers, wherever I put them at, right here. Lay them in here. There's actually a little hole inside there. That copper wire goes in. Push this down. And you squeeze. And ta-da! The coaxial end. Okay. I'll go ahead and finish this jumper off, huh? Let's complete it. Let's first cut this crap end off. So let's cut through the first one. I'm listening. And the second one just started to dig in. There we go. Put this on. Nice and flush. Put it in our crimper. I need to stay on the camera. Crimp it. Ta da! We have a coaxial cable. Okay. All right. Um, and the way to check these, really, the only thing you can do is um, you can shorten out this copper against this metal of this connector so that it's shorted out and then come down here and without touching the copper on the other end to the outside connector you should be able to read continuity with an electrical meter and if I had an electrical meter here I would demonstrate that and I didn't think that far ahead but anyway that's how you would test that cable and I think that's it um, of course if you ever have any questions please let me know